Flanders 2017, an absolutely outrageous race. So we can see we've got the powered air at the top, gradient on the left, heart rate, sorry, cadence at the bottom with speed. Gilbert's just going through to pull. You can see the powered air is like a couple seconds out, but it's the best we could get. Um, which is an unbelievable race. If you haven't seen it, it is absolutely class. So I'm just going to run through the power data, but also more impressively, I guess, is just, you know, how he managed to win this race. So obviously, if you don't know, Gilbert won this solo from 56k. So we're going to head across to the Patsburg, uh, sorry, to the Eau de Quermont, and he's just approaching the bottom with 56 kilometers to go. There was an early split. The early split was on the Muir de Van Gerritsbergen. Um, there were three quick step, a couple in here, a couple of Sky Riders, and um, a, a pretty strong group went ahead. Uh, Sagan and notably Greg Van Avermaet missed out. So going into the, the Quermont, if you don't know the climb, uh, it's not too steep, you know, uh, maybe max 10%, but it's 5%, uh, it's like 6% or so for quite a long time. Um, and Gilbert just goes, he said, I'm just, I was just going to go full. And you can see that he goes full, the power's up to sort of 600 watts, and he's on the front now and just drilling it. You can see Gianni Moscon in the sky kit over there struggling. Same with Luke Rowe. Um, Sasha Lamoro could be with the UAE riders looking tough at the back. Um, and everyone's really struggling. It's 56k to go. No one is expecting a full gas attack. Uh, from Philippe Gilbert, but he was on an outrageous form. I believe he, he um, came second in E3 Harold back in this year and just managed to win pretty much every race he was entering uh, for quick step, uh, especially obviously the Tour of Flanders, which was a huge race for him. Uh, another Adjie Dezer ride is going back, but just look at the number 600 the whole time, 8%, 22k an hour. Okay, the cobbles aren't crazy, but they still sap at your average speed here, uh, and he's absolutely flying, and Trentin just looks around and is like, Anyone want to pull a turn? And they're like, no, 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 no. We're not chasing this boy. Gilbert was on a different level. I think he normally is about 370 watts um, for his three and a half hour solo breakaway. But like, he was just, you know, cruising around 350, 360 and then just whack it on every climb, which we'll show you. Uh, we're going to show you like the Koppenberg, uh, the Pattersburg twice um, and also the Tienberg as well. Um, so Gilbert's gone solo now uh, and he's just, you know, Peloton's 41 seconds back and Gilbert's just attacked. Two quick step riders, I think, you know, uh, Bonin, obviously, it was his last Tour of Flanders, so I, I assume he really, really wanted to win. But unfortunately for him, Gilles Bell was an absolutely outrageous day. Um, and that was all, you know, all she wrote, more or less. Uh, there was there was no coming close to him. Obviously, she, uh, Sagan did end up crashing in this race, but we'll, we'll get to that later. And we also see what happened to Tom Bonin. But I think this might be an Arno Demar on the front, but the, the, the Quermont gets... Um, quite fast. He's off the top of the Quermont now um, and he's onto the fast part and you can see the chase behind is just really, really not very strong. Uh, Gilbert's flying now going for it. Well, he starts to fly in a bit. He's backed off the power a bit, but there's a good descent into the pass bow um, where he can rest a little bit up to 50k an hour. Not going too hard at the moment. I guess he's just, you know, recovering from the huge effort. Here's the peloton even further back, uh, 55 seconds back from Gilbert. Gilbert's already got a 23 second gap um, and that's the sort of top rider he is. On the descent to the uh, Pattersburg, there was a big crash uh, where Seth Van Mark got his wheel stuck in the middle of the road uh, and took out Luke Rowe as well, uh, which obviously disrupted the chase group a bit more uh, as there were less and less people willing to chase. We're now going to zoom into Gilbert, razzing it down the Quermont, um, and sorry, towards the Koppenberg um, and launching it up this climb. Unfortunately, the Pattersburg footage seemed to have been lost, um, but he was flying up. The Pattersburg as well it was like 600 whole way, and the same with the Koppenberg to be fair. This was like 45k to go, um, and the boy had a big, big gap. And we can see the Koppenberg gets steep. Look at the bottom there 22%. He's absolutely flying up this climb. Um, obviously, 9k an hour, but on these cobbles, I can attest they are very, very steep. Um, I have ridden most of these climbs, um, and they're top, top that I really enjoyed going to the cobbles, um, and it's super hard to ride hard on them. This is the Timeberg. Uh, Gilbert's now got 37k to go and he again just launches it at 600 watts um, and this is where unfortunately for Tom Bonin his day ended um, apparently he's trying to run a 54.39 and Dure said nah not possible and dropped his chain which is not not what you want to see in your last tour of Flanders on your special white bike and you really thought you were going to win it but unfortunately for the big boy Gilbert on his team was just absolutely flying up this climb just like just over 600 the whole time and it's just ridiculous like mid-race Whacking 600. Okay, he's a big boy. He's not, you know, it's not, he's like 75 kilos, 73 kilos, something like that. But even so, the numbers are just absolutely bonkers. Um, so, yeah, the boy the boy is on something else. Uh, and then here we go. Tom Bonin drops his chain, calls for the quick step. But that's it. Game over. I mean, it didn't really matter. The quick step were never going to ride Gilbert back. I mean, Tom Bonin, at this point, he was never going to win a sprint. They kept on trying to ride for him because, obviously, this good lad did win a lot of races, obviously, of course. 
like you know he just didn't have that that abs out and out speed. It just wasn't a lot. It like wasn't guaranteed win if they brought it back. So anyway, they sacked off Schilber. We then skip 18k. They did the Hottenberg and they did a couple of and a couple other climbs um towards the bottom of the Quermont. But the Quermont was where they were going to bring it back. The rest was irrelevant. Gilbert was out on the front on his own. Sagan, uh, Nason, Van Avermaet, they were all chasing, and uh, everyone was like, you know what? If they're going to get him, they'll get him now. Um, but Gilbert still got big, big numbers in him, and 500 watts, 490 up here. Okay, he obviously looks way more labor than he did the first time up, um, no, the second time up here. Uh, but even so, you know, he's still looking super, super strong. Um, cadence is still pretty decent, um, like 80 odd cadence on the cobbles is, is sort of what you want to see. Um, but we're going to get um, him just like the action up here was just it was just sort of a bit disappointing because obviously, unfortunately, Fuss again. Uh, he did end up crashing. Here's Trentine, I think, just flying off the back. There was a small chase group with Bellini and um, also Van Baal, who tried to trace across, but that never really went anywhere. It was all about Sagan. It was all about Greg Van Avermaet. Van Avermaet had won, I think, almost every single race. I think he, like, this year, he was on a, a flying form, but there was just something about Gilbert in this Flanders that no one was going to come close. And I mean, like, if you think about it, if he's riding at, like, 370, 360 normalized for three and a half hours, to get him back and he had like a big gap, like a minute, you've got to be doing 400 or like minimum on the front at all times to get him back. And that's just quite hard unless you're really, really committed because that's a big effort. So um, you can see Sagan here on the front with Nason, Van Baal, Van Avermaet, uh, Amano Aviti, I think could have been there. Oh no, that was a, that was a different, I think it was 2016. Uh, and there it was Bellini, Trentine's just getting tailed off the back. Uh, but this is, you know, the, the climb gets steep and then over the top here, it, it flattens off quite a lot. You can see Gilbert's doing 30k an hour here. So it, it's a pretty fast climb. Sagan's on the front and he's looking strong. This was, peak, you know, one of the peak Sagan's when he was absolutely flying. And on a course like this, you really would expect him uh, to be able to b bring back quite a lot of time. He's already dropped uh, Van Baal. There's just three left, Nason and Van Avermaet with Sagan. And this is where the fateful event occurs. Um, and you can see he goes too close to the barriers and hooks his um, handlebars round the bars um, and then the jacket comes with him and they go flying over. Cheerio, Van Baal goes straight past. Um, but luckily for us, well, we, well, not luckily, but Gilbert, you know, keeps going uh, and you will we'll get to see his, his ascent of the Patsburg, um, you know, a long time solo. Obviously, Granat, Greg Van Avermaet was pretty beaten up, didn't manage to get second still, but these boys were, yeah, there was no way. I think they know straight away. At this point, you know, they only really care about the win and the, the race is over. Maybe nice and not as much, but definitely Sagan. So anyway, this is going into the Paddersburg for the last climb of the Tour of Flanders. Um, pretty steep, um, this climb, but it's a fast run in, so the first bit isn't too bad. You can see here, 60k an hour is what, uh, is what the boy Gilbert is doing. Uh, and he, when he comes into the bottom of it, uh, it's pretty... Pretty fast, but a very steep climb. Very, very steep. Uh, about 12% average, I think. So you can see him absolutely ripping down this descent. Um, and he's got onto the cobbles. 670 watts. And he turns on uh, with 13.5k to go. Minute 20. He's got this in the bag. Let's be honest. We all know it. But just watch this ascent and you're like, this guy is something else. Because, you know, three and a half hours in, it's very easy. On, on a solo, it's very easy to, to crack or whatever. Um, you know, it was, it was a hard old race. Um, 55k to go solo, obviously, you know, it's a big day out, um, you know, brought five hours into the race, something like that, um, and yeah, he's, he's just keeps it like 500 to 600 the whole time up this climb, which I just think is unbelievable, because it's, it would be so easy to just cramp or whatever on, after such a hard effort, but obviously he paced it pretty well, um, and still had a lot of punch left, um, for this final climb, where, it gets up super, super steep to like, tw uh, I think 15, 16% at the end. And you can see from this climb, there's no one even close to them. Like he's just, he's just miles ahead. And we'll get to see when he gets to the flat. It's not like he gets the flat and just soft pedals at 300. Like, nah, 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 he's still drilling it big time. Um, I don't think he's the most aerodynamic of human, to be honest, or maybe he had a headwind because he was only going like 42K an hour at the end. Um, but here, like, again, he slightly is backing off a little bit, 400. But you can see here's like, the other boys, uh, like Trentine, um, coming across Van Avermaet as well. But we're going to skip ahead to like 3.6k to go because these boys are chasing. And I just want you to sh look at the power. Like, it's just so strong. Obviously, as I just say, it's like 300. But like, just keeping that round 300, Gilbert is getting chased by, I guess, Van Baal and Van Avermaet, which is it. So 
you know, he knows he's got it in the bag, but he's just still so strong at the final kilometers here, like it's just 340, 330 the whole time. And I mean, like, it's just crazy to think about it. Like, this is sort of like, like tempo that they could just ride for like five, six hours at a time, which is pretty much what he did. Um, and he's, he's, yeah, it's just one of the most unbelievable wins uh, in history um, in the Tour of Flanders. Well, at least recent history. I mean, it wasn't a sprint. It was, you know, it wasn't with anyone else. He just launched it with 55k to go. But the thing is, like, the reason I mentioned the three and a half hours, and you might be like, well, he wasn't solo for three and a half hours. But he was working for three and a half hours from the Muir van Gerisbergen. I think it was like, you know, a long, a long time to go and they split it. And that, I think, you know, obviously shocked a lot of teams, but it was, it was a really hard race from the beginning. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, it wasn't just the 55k solo. It was, it was quite a lot more than that. But anyway, I'm going to leave you now. We'll, we'll watch the last couple kilometers with some tunes on the background. Um, and you can see his mad celebrations as the boy in the Belgian national jersey managed to win Ronde van Vlaanderen. Uh, and it was, yeah, an unbelievable. And now I think he's only, well, he's now only one away, but he was uh, cancelling off more and more monuments. Um, he's done, he just needs to get uh, San Remo, I think it is, and he's done. So anyway, cheers for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.